Example three. Oh. That boy's got muscle. So, what on earth is that talking about? Go to page 375 in your book. Learn about this guy named Brad Zavinsky. He climbed a 660 meter cliff with no legs. Or without the use of his legs. He has legs. Pretty impressive. Okay? So it says, Brad Zavinsky, or Z Zen, Zidane, Den, uh, blah. Guy named Brad. Guy named Brad. Is enthusiastic about mountain climbing. However, he's quadriplegic. What does that mean? Um, he can't well, his legs. 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 Yeah, legs are not working. Legs are dead. And he, so he uses custom gear to climb up the Stawamus Chief in Squamish, BC. And he did that on July 31st, 2005. What he does is, you can kind of see it in his hand, he's got these two things that he holds and he pulls up and then lets go and him pulling up pulls his entire body and his gear up the mountain a little bit and then it locks and he can reset and then pull up more, lock, reset, pull up more. It took him quite a while. That'd probably okay? be a long like, day. Man. Somebody who has all four limbs available can just, you know, climb a lot, climb a lot faster but he's got to pull himself up and his chair and the bike tires, and, everything. and there wasn't just one big long rope from the top to the bottom, there were 11 pitches along the way. You guys know what a pitch is? Yeah. It's like a checkpoint. Okay, so if you like, if you imagine this is the cliff, okay, there were 11 kind of checkpoints. Is that 11? No, oh, okay, there's 11. Okay, so they're, they're like checkpoints along the way where he would switch ropes over, someone would help him down, or someone would come down and help him adjust his gear and make sure everything fit snugly still so that he didn't fall and die. Wow. Right? So, that takes time as well. So not only is he climbing, or pulling, but he also has to switch at every pitch. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So, it says, suppose he moved at a constant rate and climbed the 660 meter summit in 11 pitch, pitches or sections. Each pitch was approximately 60 meters in height. So every 60 meters he had to go through this little changeover thing. He started at 5.45 in the morning. Early. Um, when he started his climb, he was 60 meters below the top of his first pitch, which makes sense because he's on the ground and the first pitch is 60 meters up. Ten minutes later, by 5.55, he was 40 meters below that same pitch. So he wasn't quite there yet, but ten minutes later he, was, he had 40 meters to go until the first pitch. So what we're going to do is, for A, we're going to write an equation that represents Brad's distance, D, in meters, below the top of the first pitch in terms of T minutes past 5.45 a.m. Okay, we're going to express it in y equals mx plus b form. Okay, so I'll just I'll zoom in on this portion of his journey so far. Okay, so if here's the ground, here's the cliff, here's the first pitch. Okay, that height is 60 meters. At 5:45, Brad was here. Okay, 5:45. By 5:55. How high was he off the ground? 20 meters. 20 meters. Okay, good. So we need an equation that represents that. Right, this height would be 20. All right, so I need D and T for all my variables. D is the distance below the first pitch. T is how many minutes have passed? Past 5.45. Let me ask you a question. At zero minutes, how many meters did he have to go to get to the first pitch? 60. 60. Okay, so at zero minutes for T, he had 60 meters to go, D. That's a point, right? At zero minutes, he had 60 meters to go. At 10 minutes, how many meters did he have left to go? 40. 40. That would be another point. Get the idea? So we have two points based on that information. Can you make something in slope, well, first of all, slope point form, and then slope intercept form based on that? So, just continuing on here. You're trying to put it into slope point form to start with. 
What two things do you need again? Slope and a point. Do you have a point? Yeah, you've got two. Do you have a slope? No, but you can find it. How? Slope formula, right? So that's just 60 minus 40 over 0 minus 10. That's 20 over negative 10 equals negative 2. How many got that so far? Negative 2 for a slope? Yeah. Good. What do you do with that? Put that into equation. Yeah, put that into slope point form, right? The equation. So, which point am I going to use? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, right? Let's use this one because it's got a zero. Sometimes that does funny things. So, I need 60 for y, so y minus 60 equals m. What? Well, I know m, sorry times x minus 0. How many got that? Or you use the other point? Use the other point. Okay, that's fine. So that's, just clean it up a little bit, that's just negative 2x, right? Because x minus 0 is just x times negative 2. From there I'm going to turn it into slope-intercept form, because ultimately that's what the question is asking. So I bring it over y equals negative 2x plus 60.